I'm going to tell you guys a quick little story, and it does go into the, um, into the blog that's going to go on the way, possibly, maybe not after <laughs> I bring this word. But my mother, whom I love dearly, I tell everything to. And I just tell her about what's going on in my life and so on and so forth. And um, God saw fit to bring my older sister back into my life. And not only back into my life, into my brother's life, and she came by way of my mother. Like, she sought my mother out to seek us out. And that's a, that's a whole nother story, so I'm not going to go into that. But Philema and my mother have a relationship enough where Philema calls my mother. And I believe that she calls my mother to sort of feel out how to move with Rashawn and I. And that's understandable because... Twins can sort of be intimidating relationship-wise because we are a unit. So we're like, don't penetrate if you're new. So I understand why she went the route that she went, but she called me one morning and she just started like, oh, your life, I, I hear that you're doing this and I hear that you're doing that. And I'm like, okay, yeah, yes, yes, I am a minister. Yes, I have a blog. You know, like all, and it's, it was normal to me. But she was so excited. Like, she made my life sound like, I was like, wait, why am I excited, as excited about my life as she's excited about my life? And I realized that it was the way that my mother told the story. Wow. And everybody thinks that mothers embellish or mothers, you know, lie. <laughs> to talk their babies up, but I listened to everything that she said, and my mother didn't embellish one thing. It was simply the way that she presented it. It made it so palatable that somebody else ran and told me about how good my life was, and it convicted me. Because I was like, are you that way with God? Do you tell his story so energetically and so excitedly that somebody runs and tells that? So. As I stayed before God with that, because that really worked on me. So as I was in God in that, he gave me a few things that I want to share with you, how to become excited, how to become excited about sharing an excited gospel. So the first thing is be honest with yourself. You cannot share anything that you are not honest about. Wow. You have to be true to who you are. You have to be true to your calling. You have to be true to who God said you were. It goes back to me being an evangelist. I wouldn't fit as trying to preach the gospel or teach the gospel as a teacher or a prophet if that is not my strength. You understand what I'm saying? Um, and I'll give you another example of being honest with yourself. I'm a stylist. I know absolutely nothing about sneakers. Like sneaker game, I don't understand it. But I'm honest with it. So even as a stylist, I can be like, yes, I'm a stylist. But honestly, I absolutely know nothing about sneakers, which opens the door for me to talk to somebody and say, can you tell me about sneakers? Can you tell me what you like? So that I, I may not be a sneaker expert, but I gleam off of somebody who knows something. Yeah. So if you're honest, it allows dialogue to say what you do and don't know so that you can learn and that you can grow in Christ. Amen? Amen. The verse that God gave me was James. So um, James chapter 1, and we're going to go from 6 to 8. He kept me all in the New Testament. Another interesting thing, because you know I'm an Old Testament baby. So let me know when you've got it. Got it. Yay. But let him ask in faith without doubting, for the doubter is like the surging sea, driven and tossed by the wind. That person should not expect to receive anything from the Lord. An indecisive man is unstable in all his ways. In, an, in, in another adaptation, it says a double-minded person is unstable in all of their ways. When you are not honest with yourself, you are double-minded. It clearly states, like, um, double-minded comes from the Greek word dipsukos, and it means of two minds, of two souls. The Bible clearly states you won't receive from the Lord. So how can you move an exciting gospel 
when you're not in a place to receive from God because of your double-mindedness. Two minds and two souls means that you serve two masters, self-doubt and Christ. And even in Matthew 6, 24, it speaks, you can't serve two masters. You're unstable. You're up, you're down. You're on fire, and then you're cold. How many of us have fallen victim to saying that we are Christians and we are on fire in front of people visually and something happens to shake our lives and we become cold. You are now professing double-mindedness and not Christianity. You have to be stable in Christ. You have to, in it, but in order to be stable, you have to be honest so that you can create the dialogue between you and God. He can present to you people that will be surrounded with you so that they can help you through the process, but there has to be honesty. You become restless, confused, your actions, your behaviors, it's all sporadic. It doesn't, it doesn't give the example of being excited for Christ. Because if I'm excited one minute and then I'm cool or lukewarm the next minute, somebody who does not know Christ looks at me as that is, should I be patterning myself after that? I believe that double-mindedness is one of the biggest threats of spreading the gospel because the gospel is visual. We are walking, living, breathing examples of God's word. Right. And when we are double-minded, when we are not honest, though we think that we're hiding something, it is so visual and so visible to those who are not believers. People are important to God. Like, they're just important to him. And we are playing a dangerous game saying that we profess the gospel if we're not honest. Amen? Amen? So the first thing we want to do is be honest with ourselves. The next thing we want to do is be reliable. I'm going to go to Acts chapter 8, verses 26 through 40. I'm going to read the whole thing. So I'm going to start now, so as you get there, you can catch up with me, amen? An angel of the Lord spoke to Philip. Get up and go south to the road that goes down from Jerusalem to Gaza. This is the desert road. So he got up and went. There was an Ethiopian man, a eunuch and high official of Candence, queen of, the Opi queen of the Ethiopians, who was in charge of her entire treasury. He had come to worship in Jerusalem and was sitting in his chariot on his way home, reading the prophet Isaiah aloud. The spirit told Philip, go and join that chariot. When Philip ran up to it, he heard him reading the prophet Isaiah and said, do you understand what you're reading? He said, how can I, unless someone guides me? I'm going to stop real quick, because he was honest. Yeah. How can I? I can't understand it yet. He didn't say yes, and then live in ignorance and not know the fullness of God. Amen? Hallelujah. God really literally just revealed that to me. Unless someone guides me. So he invited Philip to come up and sit with him. Now the scripture passage he, he was reading was this. He was led like a sheep to the slaughter, and as a lamb is silent before its shearer, so he does not open his mouth. In his humiliation, justice was denied him. Who will describe his generation? For his life is taken from the earth. The eunuch replied to Philip, I ask you, who is the prophet saying this about, himself or another person? So Philip proceeded to tell him the good news about Jesus, beginning from that scripture. And as they were traveling down the road, they came to some water. And the eunuch said, look, there's water. What would keep me from being baptized? And Philip said, if you believe with all your heart, you may. And he, re he replied, I believe that Jesus Christ is the son of God. 
Then he ordered the chariot to stop, and both Philip and the eunuch went down into, into the water, and he baptized him. When they came up out of the water, the spirit of the Lord carried Philip away, and the eunuch did not see him any longer, but he went on his way rejoicing. Philip appeared in Azotus, and he was traveling and evangelizing all towns until he came to Caesarea. In order to be reliable, we have to be obedient. If Philip was not obedient, he would have stopped the flow of how God was moving. The Holy Spirit said, get up and go. His obedience made him go. The Holy Spirit said, get into the chariot. He got into the chariot. And from that, one man was saved, but went on his way rejoicing. Do you not think that the excitement of his rejoicing of being saved from Christ would not be spread? But we have to be obedient. We have to be reliable. We have to be someone who can be counted on. I believe that God knew that he could count on Philip to follow his instructions. How many of us can God count on to follow his instructions? If God told you to get up tomorrow and go to Myers and just start greeting people, would you do it? We have to be so consistent, our posture so stable, that one takes our consistency for granted. And the bishop said that when we had the latter rain conference. And it spoke to me because I was, I, I was telling Kendra that I was angry about a friendship because I was like, you guys are not holding up your end of the bargain as friends. And I'm about to walk away from this because it is not, this is not mutually beneficial. So I believe that th my time has come to, to part ways. Do you know what my response was to saying that? You're not gonna leave. We know you. You are too consistent. You, are, you have invested too much in us to leave. And I was offended by that. Like everything, everyone was like, I'm gonna leave just to spite you. But my character wouldn't let me leave. And I, say, I kept hearing God, and I'm like, I want to get all out of my flesh and like, get in your face and be like, you ain't nobody. Like, just do all of that in, in the throes of somebody saying, I know you're not going to leave. Because when we, when we hear that, usually in relationships, it's abusive. It's somebody taking us for granted. But I believe that that taken for granted has been perversed because we should be so constant and so consistent and so steady that you know the person to do this. You, you just know. Like we know God to be consistent. Yeah. Like we know God to be constant. Yeah. That is what he wants us to be like. Yeah. And so I kept wanting to be Jaquiel, and God kept saying, listen. And I'm like, and I'm like well, God, look, we're going to have to parlay and talk on the side because I don't understand. And he was like, I'll tell you later. I'll show you later. But don't react in your flesh. And I didn't. I just looked and I'm like, I held my peace. I skated some more, but I felt away. <laughs> and then when I came to the latter rain, rain conference, that's when it was revealed that consistency, good consistency means people might take you for granted but only because they know that you're consistent in who you are and what you say. You've gotta be reliable. Does it mean that some people will walk over you? Possibly, but for that I encourage understanding and discerning relationships so that you can know when to step back in a healthy way. But be so consistent that somebody takes you for granted. And that leads into be an example. So we are now onto the third thing of how to bring the exciting gospel and be excited about it. Be an example. God is faithful. Yeah. He's consistent. He changes not. As sure as the sun rises, and even if it didn't, God would still be God. Yeah. If we are created in his image, why would we be anything less? Why would God not call us to be an example and be an example of his faithfulness? 
Be faithful to our brothers and sisters. Be faithful in love. Be faithful and consistent in walking it out with somebody who does not know God. Like we preach within the walls and God is calling us out. It is not a mistake that the heads of our church are putting us in our positions to move because we are moving outside of the church. I believe that when we have Bible study and when we have service, it is fellowship. It is a time to pour in. But every day that you wake up, you go to war. You go to work. You work for God. You've got to be an example every day. This, we play church here, not here, but Christians have become used to playing church. I'm going to just roll up my sleeves. It's getting very warm in here. I don't know why you guys are so cool. <laughs> Might I suggest some iron? <laughs> But we have to literally be an example of who God is and what he calls us to do. We can't be in a position where we're taking our Christianity for granted. And what we're doing is taking it for granted because we want to preach to each other. I want to prophesy and pour into you. I want to get an apostolic charge from you. But that is not, that's not what God called. He didn't call us to fill each other up. He called us to go out into the world and make disciples of men. If you, if you go out, and you speak to nobody that day, on, you man. failed in your job. On, you didn't even say hello. You failed in your job. Yeah, 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 yeah. You don't have to move like me, but if God tells you to do something, do it. It's that simple. Yeah, yeah. How can we expect? We can't preach to ourselves anymore. I believe it upsets God. It makes him mad when we preach to ourselves, and he's like, but my people, you why would you not go out and give the love that I've given to you the mercy that I've given to you share it with somebody because somebody is lost somebody's watching you you're an example how are you selfish with my love how is your mouth muted when I need you to proclaim who I am we have to be an example we can't, we can't play with this anymore. Amen. It's very real, and it, it grew in me. Yeah. I'm not going to say that this was an instantaneous thing. I'm going to be very honest. I've been in God since I was born. I've been in church since I was born. But my relationship has been a slow build. I'm grateful for the slow build. Because if I had exploded, I might have burned out. But the slow build allows a consistency to get in me. When I get knocked down, I get back up. I steady my feet. God had so been planting things in me that I was unconscious of, and he decided to wake it up. I was a sleeper cell for Christ and didn't even realize it. The things that he had set in place and set in motion, when it was released, I woke up. But I didn't wake up unprepared. I woke up with all that I needed within me. Yeah, yeah. Amen? Amen? We have to be an example. We just have to be. It is impossible to preach the gospel and not be an example. Yeah. Those two things don't live together. Amen. They can't coincide. You can't preach the gospel or bring the gospel and expect nobody to look at you you will go back to being not being honest. You will go back to being double-minded. The gospel's for you, but it doesn't pertain to me. I give you Jesus, but I spit on him. We have to be an example. I am passionate about God. I love him. He saved me. He saved me. Yeah. Not only did he save me, but he saved me. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. 
the more I'm in him. I, I don't just run up on people. I'm from New York, if y'all don't know. I used to get mad at the people who would wait till the doors of the train close and start preaching death and damnation. I was offended by it. I just, I'm like, that's not the God we serve. He's a loving God. Why would you, why would you wait till people are trapped? It makes them, you're a bad example. And that's real. You don't want to be a bad example. Be a good example. So let's change that. Be a good example, not a bad example. Because you don't want to tell somebody, God is for me, but he's not for you. You're too far gone. You've got to do it exactly this way or you're not getting in. You've got to be exactly like me or there's no keys to the kingdom for you. And it will bother me so much, hallelujah, that when it would happen, I would be sitting next to somebody and I'd take my ears off and I'd listen to them. And I'd hear them grudge and be like, oh, I can't stand when that happens. That's it. And I'd turn around and be like, everyone's not like that. I love the Lord. And I believe that God has something in store for you. So please don't take that one person's approach as all of us. Just that. Because I like instinctually, I'm like, you got to combat some crazy sometimes. Everybody, like all zeal and no wisdom can hurt people. So I'm grateful that God just made, just made me fed up but didn't want to make me like, yeah, don't that make you mad? Then I would be a bad example. The fourth thing we have to be is excited. Like, I went to a Clippers baseball game. And I'm not really a big baseball fan, but what I am is a fan of Groupon and $5 outings. I will not lie. Like, I just absolutely am enamored with $5 activities. Who can beat that? Like, it's literally the same as a happy, val a happy meal or a value meal at McDonald's. So, like, get you out there and get around some people. So I'm sitting at this game, and this OSU area, they be wilding out in the full-out paint. Like, I'm like, homie, was he like an alumni or something? Because every time since they're like, yeah, like they just went crazy and got wild. And I'm like, but they kept doing it. And I got excited. I'm like, yes, who are y'all shouting for? I want to be down. OK, but that's how excitement works. At first, it's just loud. And you're like, yay, yes, yes. What, what are we doing? What are we excited about? And then. But if we're excited like that in God, yeah, 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 yeah. somebody's like, yay, I see. Who y'all excited about? I'm like, Jesus. And I'm like, who's Jesus? Yeah. Yes, yeah. we in there. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Get excited. Get excited about him. You can't profess God. It's like when I was younger, there was this cartoon. Does anybody remember Droopy the dog? Yeah. 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 My dad. <laughs> used to mock him and it would make me so mad like I would go up to him, he said I'm so happy and I would look at him like smile <laughs> yes not, that's not happy I'm like this is happy he'd be like I'm so sad and I'm like this is sad like but we go back and forth but are you that kind of a Christian are you the kind of Christian that gives the gospel and says God is so good, but you know, my gas tank is on E, so. <laughs> and then give the look of like, can't be that good. You know what I'm saying? Like you give off an unappealing God. Yeah, yeah. Why would you do that? He's so merciful. He's so great. It even adds to your example if you're excited. It's a good example when even when stuff is bad. Yeah. You're still excited. Yes, yes. How's everything going? My stomach hurts, but God is good. <laughs> right. I'm excited. Gonna get some Pepto Bismol. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But like, there's an excitement. I'm like, why is she so happy? What is it about? What? What are you doing? And I'm like, it's God. Yeah, yeah. Ask me. Ask me why. I get get a little T-shirt on. I'm like, ask me why I'm happy. Come on, come on. Like, I will lay. I could not. I was jogging. 
one time and I just like, not that I have to build up my, I do have to build up my cardio, like that's real, that's another story. But I was just thinking, I was just thinking about how good God was and at first, like I'd be silent and I'm like, <laughs> and I'm like, the fire is burning tonight. And I kept going, I got joy, joy. I'm just running, singing, since Jesus made everything right. I'm, I'm just excited. And I'm like, Jaquil, shut up. And I'm like, no, I gave him my old filthy God. I'm just running and excited. <laughs> And God was so, like, I was just so excited about him that day that I decided not to put the excitement down. And when I went home, I sang it some more, and I laid in bed and was falling asleep and called my mother and was like, sing it with me now. And I know (laughs) that, like, I know the people outside can hear, I know the people beside me can hear, I know Palm can hear, but I was so excited, and I just made the choice not to put the excitement down. I want to learn to be continually excited for God. I don't just want to be excited for the things that he does anymore. I want to be excited for who he is. I want to just be like, Jesus made everything right. I gave him my own filthy garments. He gave me a robe of pure white. Now I'm feasting on manna from heaven. That is why I'm happy tonight. That is why I'm happy. That is why I'm happy. That is why I'm happy tonight. Yeah. Like, I'm, I, y'all gonna make me sing that song when I die tomorrow. I'll be, listen, like, God is so good. And I feel like Amina when I say that, but I, you, I kept this video of her. And when I was having a bad day, I would watch it because it would pump me up. Like, I'd get excited in it. And she, she was just three years old when she started, like, when she did this little video. And she went to a Christian school, and they say, God is so good, hallelujah. That's it. That was the whole song. So I'm like, Bear, sing me this song. And she's like, Snipe, God is so good. Hiya, you, yeah. God is, and I'd be, I'd be, I'm like, yes, he's so good. And she would get like, but I could imagine a whole bunch of little kids just getting pumped with each other. Like, God is so good, hallelujah. And I'm like, yes, like, that's how we should be. Like, we got to just be like, God is so good, hallelujah. You just got to get pumped and get excited. Like, she didn't even have her little classmates around her, but it was like something clicked in her at three. And she realized that God is so good, so she muddling past that snotty nose and like, God is so good, hallelujah. And I'm like, she got so pumped. I was, I had to drop this one. I'm like, yes. My mother was like, Jaquil, I'm like, I want her to sing that all the time because there's an excitement in God. We can't be without excitement, without passion for Christ. How will you attract people towards you? People are not attracted to boringness. Keep it 100. That's why it seems like sin is winning. Wow. Seems. Because sin looks exciting. Yes, it does. Yes, it does. Sin looks interesting. They're trying new things on television. I'm not sure about it, but I want to watch it because everybody's talking about it. Honey, and that other show, uh, How to Get Away with Murder. I'm going to have to pray about that because I'm going to have to let it go. (laughs) But but there's an excitement about it. There's a buzz about it. Everybody's talking about it. On Thursday, you know that Tumblr, Twitter, Facebook, any other outlet is going to be talking about it. There's an excitement about it. We doing that with Christ? You TGI Thursday with Jesus? No? Okay. You see what I'm saying? Like, we have to present an exciting gospel. God is still alive. The word is still real. Salvation belongs to you. How is that how how is that not appealing? My God. That's good. And the last thing that we have to be is infectious. Wow. We have to infect people with God's goodness. We can no longer be a body that is afraid to get in the mud and get somebody out. Yeah. Mm, come on. 
we got to make us look good. We got to make it look good. Sin seems good because everybody's out there doing something. Everybody out there just being out there. And though we are a part of the world, we belong to God. But that doesn't mean that we just stay in this bubble and look outside and point and try and tell somebody to come inside the bubble. Get you out of that bubble and go grab somebody. I'm going jogging tomorrow. I did ask God about that. God did some funny things regarding that. I'll tell you later. But do you know what? I got my number 2515 that's going to be on my chest. You want to know what's going to be on my back? I press towards the mark of a high calling. And I'm going to be like, keep running. Jesus loves you. So whoever's behind me and getting fatigued can look up and see. I'm getting out there. I'm getting in there any way that I can. I might not have enough strength to talk to you, but if you're behind me and you see it and you ask me a question, I'm going to stop and tell you about who he is. I believe that Christians should not be afraid to get in the world anymore. We have so much talent. We have so many gifts that are locked up because we are scared. I'm not scared anymore. I'm just going to be out there. I'm a, as Palm said, just get in there. Just get in there. That doesn't mean, be mindful, that doesn't mean I'm going to the strip clubs and making it rain on anybody. Not doing that. I'm seeking God in the places of where I should go and what I should do, but I'm not restricted. God called us to go into the dark places. So how can you profess the gospel to people who already know it? The ones who don't know it are in the darkness of which you don't want to be a part of because you're too good? Tell me. Do you understand what I'm saying? You're not going to find somebody, like, let's be honest. Sinners are just not going to miraculously walk into church one day and be like, hey, somebody told me about a man, not you, because you wasn't out there, but can you tell me a little bit more about him? We have to go out there and get them. I admire Kendra, I'm going to be honest. Like, she's, a, she's an oddball. I love her. But she's so, she's so recklessly for God that it is something to behold. We went out to eat one time, and she had food, and we're just walking, talking, and like, I, I, like when I'm around her, it's a good conviction because she's always on guard, and it reminds me to always be on post, too. So we're just walking and talking, and she gives the food to somebody. She's like, it's okay. We need some prayer. And I'm just like, yes. That's how it's done because it's like, and it was unexpected. The person wasn't really like, you know, like, She's so direct with it. But that's, that's, an, exa- that's an example. Yeah, yeah. You've just got to get out there. Wherever God calls you, wherever your gifting is. Are you good at art? Go to an art class. Go to, you know what I'm saying? Like, are you good at, like, I don't know, what other kind of things do they have in Columbus other than roller skating and jogging? Because <laughs> that's where I'm at. That's, those are the places I'm currently plowing. Because as God gives me more, if he says, get up and go, I'm going to get up and go. But we have to be all of these things. We have to be reliable so that we can be infectious. Philip was infectious because he was reliable. We have to be excited. Philip was exciting because he did something that was just out of the blue. And he made somebody else exciting. And they went and told. They went on rejoicing. In conclusion, because I think I've been up here a minute, I just want to say God's people are important to him. So getting to them should be important to us. In order to get to them, we've got to be an excited body. And whatever your gifting is, do it excitably. Be infectious. Be somebody that they can't forget because of the God in you. Leave an indelible mark on somebody's soul, which is salvation. Amen? Amen.